Sports news for today. Very big day for sports news overall. A lot of insane things happen. Let's start out with the biggest news of today. Kevin Durant requests a trade from the Brooklyn Nets. And the main candidates he's interested in are, are the Phoenix Suns and the Miami Heat. But later come, <clears throat> that would happen. Honestly, it would probably be an amazing trade for them to get on. It would honestly put Phoenix in instant contention for a championship. They already are in contention, but that would really just let up I am. They'd be very insane. It'd be like Kevin Durant going back to the Warriors from 2017-2018. It would just be a great situation overall. And the Miami Heat, I think, would also be great. But they'd probably have to give up maybe... I think they would have to give up Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, and maybe Duncan Robinson, one of those three, and maybe some picks. But I don't know. I think they should try to get not give away Bam. And for the Phoenix Suns, they probably have to give up Bridges, at least, and Aiden. Maybe some picks and Cameron Bain, I think, will do it. Bleacher Report, this is via Blake Fisher. This is about the thing, Jake Fisher. Nets won't trade KD to Suns without Booker's return. I don't know about that. That's honestly insane. The Nets are asking for Devin Booker if the Suns trades happen. This honestly, I don't think the Nets should take... I don't think the Phoenix Suns should take this trade overall. It'd be a horrible trade for them to take. I would give them an F if they got this trade. They should not take that. I think it's expecting too much, honestly. And Devin Book, you're really looking to build around him. I don't think he would be that good of an option. Trade away your future star for a player that you really just want to acquire to build a championship team. You don't really need him to solidify. It's not like a team that doesn't have a star. They already have stars on their team. I don't think they would take it, and I don't think they should. And this is Bleacher Report. Polo Benchero said, don't sleep. He posted a picture of him in a Magic jersey with Kevin Durant. And then Richard Jefferson, hey, Paulo, I hate to break it to you, but if that happens, you're going to be in Brooklyn. <laughs> Which probably is true, like, of what they would have to give up to get him. Would probably be Paulo Ventura. Unfortunate for him, but overall, it could be good playing with Kevin Durant. Katie and Kyrie want to continue to play together, but not in Brooklyn. So that could be difficult. I just don't know if it will happen overall. They could, like, say, oh, we want to play together, but maybe it might not happen because... I think it'd be hard for a team to come with a package for KD and Kyrie. But I think Kyrie technically is in the player option. Kind of confusing overall. I might have to do some more research on that to see what's happening with them. <clears throat> Let's see. Kyrie free, ag free agency. Kyrie Irving opts in with the Nets. What decision for Kevin Durant? So he opts in. Won't become a free agent. So he really can't. They would have to give him a trade. Which they would have to trade them both individually, I think. I don't think one team would really want both of them. It would be very hard for a situation for like that to happen. I don't think a team would take the chance. But if Kevin Durant says he won't play for you unless he gets Kyrie, I don't really know what they will do. It would be very hard to get both of them. They really have to give up a lot. They might give up Devin Booker if that was the possibility of getting Kyrie and KD straight up for Ian and him, maybe. But overall, I don't think a team would trade for KD and Kyrie just because of that. USC and UCLA planning to move to the Big Ten as early as 2024. Very insane in my opinion. A Midwest kind of league, and they're going to be moving around there, both of UCLA and USC. It's going to be very weird for traveling-wise, just because most of them are in the Midwest, like I said. Except for Ruggerts and Maryland and Penn State, which those are more East Coast compared to those other ones, but it will be very all overall interesting. <clears throat> this is some football news. Let's see. These are some teams. NFL rosters ranking by Pro Football Focus. Number one, you have the Buffalo Bills. The best quarterback in the NFL right now, Josh Allen. There's really not that much more to say. Very good overall and probably the best quarterback right now playing. Number two, you have Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Evans is coming back. Chris Godwin's healthy for this season, I think. And overall, Tom Brady's back from retirement. Gronk did retire, and they did lose Antonio Brown, but I think... They still have enough for to be a viable Super Bowl contending team, so I agree with that. Number three of the Los Angeles Chargers NFL roster ranking. I agree with that as well. I think they adding Rashawn Slater drafting was probably one of the best draft picks they took. JC Jackson and their wide receiver and duos, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, they've been great. I feel like they have a great overall team. I think the coaching has really been lacking. And Cleo Mack having Joey Bosa. That's just been the main thing. Coaching, in my opinion, they have enough talent. They have Justin Herbert, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Los Angeles Rams, you have at number four. They're one of the best teams, in my opinion. 
and won the Super Bowl last year. Definitely have a very good chance to be on this list. And I'll put them around there. They have, they have added Allen Robinson. They have Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford's coming back. Just great overall situation. Number five, Green Bay Packers. That's a great option, in my opinion, as well. NFL rosters, I agree with that. Number 28, you have Jacksonville and Jaguars. They've honestly been terrible. There's not that much more to say. It's really just plain and simple. 29, you have the Seattle Seahawks. I think that losing Russell Wilson was one of the worst mistakes they had. Hope they can get a good new quarterback. They've had horrible quarterbacks, Drew Locke and Geno Smith. They're really not going to compete for anything. It's going to be a bad situation for them overall for a while. Baker Mayfield, I think, is going to be promising for them. But overall, I don't really know. Hopefully, they didn't try to get Baker Mayfield, but it's still up in the air. Number 30, the Chicago Bears. One of the worst teams in the NFL. They did add Justin Fields. That could be a positive for them. Number 31, Atlanta Falcons. They lost Matt Ryan. Probably one of the biggest mistakes they've made in a while. In my opinion, at least. 32, Houston Texans. We all know they lost to Sean Watson. And overall, they haven't really bounced back from that. I agree with that list overall. It's a very good list. It makes a lot of sense. This is Pete Thamel. Steve Jarkeeson is clearly the best guy the Manning family thinks to take the Arch Manning from high school prospect to NFL prospect. Which he's known to do quarterbacks. I think he was with Mac Jones. He really developed him more. So that could be a very good situation overall for him. And Amani Bates is actually looking. It's a kind of insane. He's actually looking to uh, go in Eastern Michigan. Kind of interesting move right there. And Victor Wombley. He's actually... A lot of people think the Spurs might get him just because they lost to Jante Murray in a very bad trade, in my opinion, to the to the Atlanta Hawks. So, do you think they have a very good chance to get him? But he's slated right now to go to the Oklahoma City Thunder in a mock draft at number one, which him and Chet Holmgren would be insane overall, but I don't think it will happen. He plays for SVEL, power forward and center, 18 years old. <clears throat> I want to say one more thing. If you've been keeping up with Ryan Tran's video, delivering a penny to Mr. Beast. It ended today. Very entertaining video. Spoiler warning, by the way, but the video of him delivering it to him was legendary video. <clears throat> honestly, one of the best videos. One of the best YouTube series in, honestly, a couple years. He's really kept YouTube really fresh and new and really been entertaining. It's going to be very hard to find better content than his, and I'm going to miss it, honestly. Hopefully, he does another challenge. Some people in the comments are actually saying he should do around the world in 80 days. That would be interesting. <clears throat> I think he would have to get more time because at day 30, he's at North Carolina. So he could do every continent off of one penny. That would be insane. But he probably would have to save up a lot of money. And I don't really know how that would work. He would definitely probably... Each flight from, you'd probably have to go from New York to somewhere else, but some of the international flights are like $1,000, up to $800, so I think that would be very hard to do. And then, this is NBA SPN. More, four, four most influential players of the last 30 years. You have Steph Curry, of course. LeBron James, of course. Kobe really re revolutionized the game. And Michael Jordan. You really can't argue. Those are the main people. And I don't think anyone else would disagree overall. But what do you think? And what's your main opinion on everything going on right now? <clears throat> and movie news and all this other stuff. Stranger Things 4 is still 650 plus hours shy of breaking Squid Game record. Stranger Things Season 4 has officially surpassed 900 million between its 28 day window. Its series overall calculates the most popular based on... Hours viewed during the 20 days of availability. This is the number one spot with over 1.6 billion hours viewed for the Squid Game. And it seems unlikely surpassed. Honestly, I agree. Squid Game. 